Mangata 5 has come back to the yard for a little bit of a rest and some service work. She's been launched for a year now. Yeah, we've had her a year and uh, the process has been sort of life changing. We've, we've had a, a holiday house to go to most weekends and when the weather's been good, we've taken both out. Um, we essentially planned our week around accessing the boat. Um, all this look coming to it, it's bright, it, we're all in close quarters with each other, spending a lot of family time with each other as compared to you know, in a house, you're all disappearing all the different rooms. It's a lovely big space to be in. You don't appreciate how big it is until you're actually in the, the space. It's an XL version of the 1295 and uh, it really gives this lovely bridge deck, nice big open galley, uh, a daughter's bunk behind us. That uh, we've also used to put the sail bags on when she's not here. Um, so, just a lovely big space. Uh, the little bits that we love too. Um, we've got two heads. One of them is you're leaning against currently is the, the bridge deck heads, which is really good. So, when uh, one of us is outside and he sees the loo, we just hop in. So, you know, the other parent is never too far away as compared to disappearing into the bowels of, of, a, of a boat normally. Uh, and, uh, so, yeah, we, we've looked at this. Uh, in fact, both of us passed comment that uh, we've sort of uh, lost interest a little bit in our house. And, uh, and we've got a, a lovely house and it's lovely positioned. And, uh, and then it's, it's what sort of, what's, you know, dramatic change into our, our, our lifestyles. So, we've got our eight year olds into surfing, our oldest lad is sort of into fishing, we're planning diving. Exercise, even just walking up and down a pontoon, on the open air, or family time. Yeah, it's great because it, it was quite experimental, wasn't it? So, how long did it take to settle into the idea of having the boat and using the boat? Well, we thought about getting the boat for a number of years. Um, we hadn't owned the boat as far, so I think it was a bit of a shock, a shock not only to our system, but maybe to. Also marine as well, but it's quite pitch up. And uh, we had done flotilla sailing, and um, uh, a number of times really enjoyed that. Um, wanted to get a bit of independence as well. Didn't, with one particular experience with poor weather, where we were, we had to go from A to B. Um, whereas perhaps on our own intuition, we wouldn't have done that. So we felt we were in a position to take more ownership of what we did. Uh, out about in the water. Um, also, the flotillas are predominantly monohulls, and uh, our daughter, just now 13, quite disabled, and trying to get her on and off the boat, trying to get her down into the cabin area of the boat was quite ideal, even more and more of a challenge. And uh, somebody suggested the catamarans, we looked into that, and yeah, stumbled on uh, multi-marine here. On a late night, sort of web search, really. Uh, had a nice website, uh, lots of detail, um, uh, and then uh, uh, booked a holiday house down here in Cornwall one summer and uh, gave a phone call ahead and, uh, and had a visit. <laughs> yeah. You came out busy, but yeah, so we went out on, uh, that's, that was the only time we've been on a Sailing catamaran. Actually, that was the only time I was sailing catamaran before we picked up the boat and sailed her up. I had been on Hobby Cats as a teenager. Um, I mean, a hissy fit. It's it's much bigger in real life than in the photographs. So that was it was really impressive the size of the boat. Um, I know Simon is big into racing and loves all that, but. We're, we're, we didn't want to be racing, we wanted to be cruising, have somewhere to go spend time, and, uh, um, and that, well, that, this boat's really done that. We're, we're not about just getting on a boat and, and going off, it's about the whole global experience, sailing, technical side, lifestyle, hobbies around the boat. Um, I have quite a bit of support from the yard, and uh, I'm putting us in contact with other people, for example, helping to sail the boat up and back down here. Um, and have you found have you found her 
a relatively easy boat for all of you to be taking on a catamaran for the first time and le and learning the skills? So the first priority for us was in, in safety and hand in hand with safety is sailability um, uh, and sailability around the UK. So the boat was safe to sail for us, um, that, was, that was our key thing. And, uh, and then the second was about uh, adaptations, it being easy to use for our daughter, accessible for our daughter. And uh, uh, on the sailability issue, it had to be sailable for the most part by one parent. Okay, so the parent was the structure involved in the care of one of our kids. And uh, you know, we come across all the boats where the helm station is separate from um, you know, any of the lines controlling the main sail. Whereas everything on this boat you can access from the helm station. Uh, one of the other, well, there was two helm stations for one of the helm stations. And um, you know, we had other things put on the boat as well, like a power winch. So the, the boat is, we felt that the boat was sort of designed around our needs to be, to be able to sail safely, um, not having too high windage, like some of the more. Uh, Hot, hotter climate catamarans. Um, we like dagger boards, so that, that, that gives the ability to sort of not just go downwind but also sort of go upwind too. It, it, we also want redundancy, so one engine failed, actually, we've got a second engine as well. It's not uh, as compared to a monohull. We wanted, we, we couldn't afford to, for ourselves to be in a crisis. We wanted to. Uh, the redundancy around the boat that uh, meant that if we did have a problem, it, it was sort outable within the restrictions of our kids, as I said, our daughter having a neurological dis disability, and the other two lads being at some point on the autistic spectrum. And uh, so, yeah, it's really worked for us. Um, the so sailability really important. The adaptations issue, so the access onto the boat, the sterns are open uh, in terms of access. The bridge deck heads, um, one of our two heads, the bridge deck heads, which has been fantastic for our daughter. Everything is on uh, in the bridge deck cabin is on, cabin is on the one level. Heads, her area where she can wander, access to meals, her bunk, and that's been a real winner for us. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so okay. load, yeah. really easy to um, steer, control. Um, in a marina, I was a little bit overwhelmed initially. Felt, you know, crikey, how are we going to navigate this inside close quarters? But it feels big. It feels big, but actually, it's really maneuverable. The helm stations, you can see all around the boat. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the. I mean, the maneuverability. You know, once you've mastered it, it's really simple, isn't it? Yeah. Straightforward. Um, gives you great confidence to go into uh, tight spaces, and yeah. um, you know, you learn some skills about having the dagger boards drop so um, the, boat, the bows don't blow off. Um, I mean, what, what's the? Is there one bit of the boat that's your favourite? You know, whether it be the steering or maybe it's the the, the head and the the saloon here. Um, or yeah. the family time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, so many different aspects. Uh, I mean, physically, we love the open space. There's a lot of you know, my wife's uh, two stories. But for either, us in, either, either of us are in the galley, family are up here. Um, it's just uh, everybody is in contact with each other. I love the bridge deck heads, uh, so ease of access. Um, the one of the things I've noticed about the boat, I still notice it, is that as we're in different situations, as we go around the boat, you know, whether it's accessing the mast or going forward, or it's like somebody else being there, experienced it, problem solved, and told the truth. So it's like as if somebody's already thought, well, you can sit there, so we do something a little bit different, or you know, getting up in the coach roof. It's almost, uh, I put my arm out and I'm finding, you know, there's an appropriate point to, to 
grab. It's like if somebody is taught ahead constantly. Um, and my wife's kind of talked about that as well. You know, we've seen other boats and the focus be more on, let's say, interior design, where everything is sharp corners and what looks like loads of useful space that actually becomes unusable. This is this is a sort of a, a sailor's boat. It's not a, um, a house with what comes and interior design put on the water. Um, That's really interesting to hear. So being honest, Thomas, what's the worst part of the boat? What is the worst part? It's not we never get enough time on it. Having to work. <laughs> you and, did um, you did say you're losing interest in your house. <laughs> yeah. What would you like to change? Uh where the boat's moored. I like to cover <laughs> climates. I mean we put a lot of thought into what we wanted even before we came to Ponte Marine. Um we had our own set of experiences, good and bad, in other boats. Um and you know a lot of that was already worked out when when we arrived here. Um, um, yeah, it's sort of I can't really come up with. Um, That's fine. Not that you can send camera. Anyway. <laughs> no, I'm just reminding me. Okay. I mean, it's been very, yeah. For me, it's been very much life changing. That's brilliant. And uh, mental health and all those things. Yeah. That's really, really nice to hear, Tom. And it's quite unusual, as Tom says. You know, we there's a lot of racing and kind of hardcore sailing of Daz cats, and it's possibly quite unusual to agree to sell a Daz cat to somebody who's never sold a catamaran before? Uh, How no, does I'm that feel sure. for multi-marine? Well, I, don't, I don't think that's true. I mean, we've, uh, we've built a number of boats for people with, you know, limited experience in um, certainly performance multi-hulls. Um, so as I said, you know, it's it's great that you know the boats do sail well, um, which extends your ability to sail and enjoy the boat. So we're we're perfectly happy to work with people, and um, you know that's part of having the, the guys in the yard with the sailing experience as well. Is that we can actually pass that on to people. So if someone does come and would like, you know, a dad's cat. Um, we work with those guys to get them up to speed and um, impart all our knowledge across to them. You know, it's about sharing, isn't it? So, uh, I guess what I'm trying to get at is when you see the footage of Daz Cat sailing, it look, it's a powerful looking performance beast, isn't it? And so somebody without experience might feel yeah. hesitant or, or yeah. Well, I, I, you know, Firstly, the boat's going to have the right uh, proportions, the right sail area, the right weight to be able to sail. And so to be able to sail in the light winds is, is where it starts off. And so that's why you have got to have the, the right features so the boats have the ability to sail. Now, whether you carry on sailing you know, as fast as some of us do, um, that's again the, the lesson of actually being, knowing when to, to back off. But, um, you know, you buy a car, an Aston Martin, you can't drive it at its maximum speed on the roads. So you have to enjoy the, the car or the boat for what it can deliver and, and get the best out of it um, for what you want. You, you do hear stories of how people have given up sailing because they've struggled a bit more with their mobility or arthritis or their wife doesn't like be on a boat that's healed all the time and uh, a boat here where I hope to be able to access well to my other age and, uh, and when it sails it's, it's, it's comfortable, it's on the flat, people aren't sort of perched in some uncomfortable position. Um, so and then you hear these sort of, sort of stories about uh, old catamarans, you know, that, no feel about it. I mean, this boat steers feels like 
I'm on a whole as I say in the past. Trying to sponsor this. Yeah, it's just a wonderful world. And, uh... Dolphins come to greet Mangata.